Hello, hello, I'm glad you're back. Well, it's been about two weeks for me, so I'm glad I'm back as well. Um, it's that time of, of year for everyone where if you've been home from work, from the coronavirus shutdowns, maybe you're returning. I got to return um, a couple weeks ago. So anyway, I wanted to make a short video today about the difference between protection and safety. So I had the interesting experience of going out on the beautiful Lake Maurepas, which is one of our lakes down here in South Louisiana where I presently live. And I went with some friends, but the other people that showed up, the people that were locals and natives to this area, um, really shared the common, <laughs> the common preference for guns, which is fine. I've, um, I've never owned a gun. I very seldom ever seen guns um, other than on police officers and, and things like that. So, so guns are still relatively new to me, but it had me thinking about um, what the purpose of having guns in your home is. Um, some people like them recreationally, that's fine. Um, but more often than not, it seems like people are buying guns for protection. There have even been um, talks of public schools having um, guns in the school uh, carried by certain licensed personnel, whether they're teachers or safety officers, whatever the case may be. And the interesting thing is that there's a big difference between protection and actual safety. So protection can be um, anything from arms that we acquire to our militaries, to um, placing security cameras on the house or on the doorbell, uh, car alarms are all protective measures. And that's really interesting. Even money can be something that's very protective. And to me, these protections are, they're necessary, but they are not inherently the same thing as creating safety. So safety is dependent on two different things. The first one is, um, are our needs being met? So if you were to either go back and watch the video that we did on Maslow's hierarchy of needs and what our needs actually are, um, or just Google it. If you get the spelling anywhere close, you'll find it. We know that we have basic physiological needs like Am I warm enough? Do I have a roof over my head? Do I have clean water to drink? Is the air well enough that I'm able to survive? Am I being fed? Um, and beyond that, we have safety needs that um, that go a little bit more broadly. They're a little bit uh, they're a little bit different than just having um, having food and water. But the interesting thing about safety beyond our basic needs being met is it's very largely an inside job. Um, what I mean by that is there's no amount of arms or money or militia power that can create a feeling of safety if you're not creating it within your body. And that can be done by shifting your nervous system from fight or flight to rest and digest. Our nervous system is um, that system that governs how we, how we float through life, how we interact with, with life as it is for us. It has two subparts. One is um, the sympathetic nervous system, that's the fight or flight. The other one's the parasympathetic nervous system, that's relaxation and resting and digesting and for many of us whether it's been living this really amped up lifestyle I'm from New Jersey so we're really praised for going hard even exhausting ourselves working crazy hours having insane deadlines uh, deadlines taking a lot of people and cramming them into small spaces um, and it's not necessarily like that everywhere in the US, but more and more and more, we are clustered towards um, living in denser areas. 
where we get more interaction, there are more stressors around. Even just with your phone, you might get text messages and all kinds of distractions coming in. Your phone rings and now all of a the sudden there's um, a level of urgency that's applied to something that really doesn't matter at all. It's probably just another, <laughs> another, another robocall because we all feel victimized by that, right? <laughs> or at least that's my, my YouTube targeted ads um, always prompt that one for me, which is just so silly, whatever. Um, but anyway, this feeling of safety is so, um, so important to us, not just for, you know, living a balanced life. It's necessary for our health. It's necessary if you are someone who's trying to learn new good habits. If you are someone who is like me, who's on a recovery journey, a lot of us are, um, we have really learned and gotten so good at that fight or flight response. A lot of us forget how to actually use that system of down regulation, of relaxation. And it's so important because whether it's, um, whether that dysregulation of the nervous system is leading us to reach for bad habits or to stuff our feelings with food or numb them out with drugs or engage in toxic relationships or, or unhealthy relationships, we, we wanna be able to create that for us. Um, many of our traumas happen so early in our lives that sometimes we can't even really remember them. We have to remember up until age three, whatever mom or the primary caregiver goes through, uh, that's what we go through. They're, they're our energetic system. They are our source of care and down regulation. So if mom's going through something that's you know, over the top for her or pushing, or pushing her beyond what she's able to handle, we're also being pushed into, into what mom can't handle, never mind what our little bodies and little minds could handle. So from the jump, there was a need for us often to have a way of down regulating, of soothing. Um, some of us skipped over that entirely. If you have been someone who has, um, in general, this is not every, every situation or every single person, but if you're someone who has made their way into strings of codependent relationships, or you're a man or a woman that's been in abusive relationships, or you've made it along a pathway where now there is an addiction that you want to work through, these can be some root causes, but it really doesn't matter how far back, um, the dysregulation began because just like um, scientists will say words like neuroplasticity basically that's a concept that our brains are plastic and they are <laughs> they can be molded into anything but that plasticity stretches all the way into the nervous system so even if we came in with predispositions for um, for drug abuse or addiction or, or, or sex addiction, whatever it might be, mental illness, anxiety, depression, all of that stuff. Even if we came in predisposed to it, learning to master our nervous system, which is just a matter of learning how to turn back on that rest and digest response, that can make a world of difference for us. That is a mastery that we really want to focus on learning. It's going to serve us throughout a recovery journey, but then also it's going to help us regulate sleep. If you want to have children and that hasn't been a possibility for you, that down regulation is going to make your body a more hospitable environment for a greater likelihood of conception, if that's something that you want in your life. If you struggle with mental illness, we need to have the plasticity and the flexibility to go from fight or flight during the soccer game to rest and digest once we get home. Moreover, and probably one of the most important things in, in my life is that as I come to practice and master down regulation and learning how to have relaxation in my body, it's permitting me to 
have much deeper, more fulfilling relationships. If we're always amped up, if we're always on edge, it's really hard to connect with people because it's like, it's like trying to engage with someone and they're like pulling weapons out and you're like, what are you doing? You need to chill out. If someone did that to you, you'd be backing away as well. Um, so if we're in that constantly amped up state, people are gonna be backing away from us. They're not gonna know how to read us because we're gonna be putting off all kinds of really stressed out, not so good feeling vibes. Um, and if people are attracted to those stressed out, not so good feeling vibes that we're putting out, oh man, <laughs> do we wanna be around them? Um, and it sounds mean, it sounds like, oh, well, do we wanna be around ourselves? Well, for better or worse, we're on earth, this is our home, our bodies are an even more immediate home for us, and we get to make them comfortable and cozy, even if they've been riddled with fear and anxiety and shame and guilt and all of those other shitty, heavy experiences that justifiably pushed us into our mental landscape as an escape from it, we still get the opportunity, we get the chance to practice cultivating some resilience down here in the body, practice relaxation, and practice making this a more hospitable home, somewhere that I want to come back to. And all of those things can be done, down regulation, can be as simple as starting to practice meditation. And yeah, it's a practice. That means it can't just be one time. It can't just be that, that time where you feel like you're at your lowest. It needs to be constant every day, multiple times a day. Short periods, you're not expected to live there and do it, do it perfectly, but practice is important just the way if a kid came home and they were given two songs to learn. You can't have them practice just one song and expect them to retain the other song or to know both of them inherently. That kid needs to practice both. And it's the same with our nervous systems. We're really, really good at amping ourselves up. We also need to get really, really equally good at down-regulating ourselves. And you deserve it. Um, in addition or or in addition or alternative to a meditation practice go outside the things that matter for our nervous system are our breath <laughs> which thank goodness it's the only part of our autonomic nervous system that we have some control over um, and the breath is really important some people do have traumas around certain breaths find a breath that works for you Find a way of tuning into your breath, and if it works, starting to stretch your exhale. That is a way for us to cue to our body that it's time to relax. The other thing that we can do is actually softening the muscles of your stomach. We have a long nerve, it's called the vagus nerve, that travels out from the back of your skull, it moves down your spine, and then it exits your spine and it touches on every organ in your torso. And like an orchestral conductor, it keeps everyone on the same page. So when we physically loosen up your body and loosen up your belly, it takes pressure off of it. It takes away the stimulation. And that orchestral conductor can get the heart to slow down. It can get digestion to resume. It can get your hormones to come back into balance. These are really important things. Um, go out in nature. All of these things and so many infinitely more things that allow you to relax. Think of it as a long-term investment. No short-term investment BS here. Start to do those things. Give your body the opportunity to relax. Give yourself the opportunity to build some resilience to some of the difficult uncomfortable sensations you might have in your body so that you can stop running away from it. So that's all for me. I love you so much. I hope this is helpful. I will talk to you soon. You're doing amazing. I love you. I love you. I love you. Until next time. Mwah.